Shonen Jump has a lot of strong characters. It does make sense. They have been around for over 50 years and have published some of the most popular action franchises in manga history. But who is the strongest? Let's find out just how strong Shonen Jump's heroes really are. Starting off our list is one of Akira Toriyama's earliest creations. Dr. Slump is about a robot girl named Arale Norimaki and her creator Senbei Norimaki and their misadventures on Penguin Village. The plot structure and overall tone of the show were more low stakes and wholesome than the other entries on this list. And Arale is a happy-go-lucky, carefree girl who often gets into trouble. Nah, don't let this pint-sized bottle of pep fool you. Arale also has super strength and is nearly indestructible. She's able to run at speeds of up to 500 miles per hour and even has a special beam cannon of her own. But how strong is Arale? Well, she is apparently strong enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Super Saiyan, Blue, Goku, and Vegeta. Yeah, in a strange crossover during Dragon Ball Super, Arale reappeared in the Dragon Ball universe. Now, with both properties created by Akira Toriyama, it makes sense that the two would meet and have a friendly fight. While Goku wasn't out to destroy Arale, he found the little girl a whole lot tougher than most of the opponents he had faced in the past. Now, would she be able to take on Jiren? It's probably safe to say no, but we know that RLA can brawl with the best of them. Coming in next on our list is Gone from Hunter x Hunter. On the surface, a lot of people can draw parallels between Hunter x Hunter and Dragon Ball. Both shows have a happy-go-lucky protagonist who started fighting at a young age. Also, both shows feature an energy-based system that's vaguely defined and becomes super important halfway through. Gon has a few tricks and abilities that make him a powerful opponent in this hypothetical shonen tournament. For starters, before the introduction of Nen, Gon was a curiously strong child. On top of that, he also has enhanced senses such as hearing and eyesight that he uses during the Hunter exams. Gon's powers both before and after Nen rival that of Goku's. He has enhanced speed and reflexes along with a healing factor similar to a Saiyan's. With the introduction of Nen, however, Gon's power rises even higher. His energy-based attacks give him the ability to crush or cut his enemies, and when all else fails, Gon can break his limitations. This unknown form gives Gon an older appearance and an ungodly amount of power. During times of emotional distress, Gon's transformation embodies all the power he will ever have into one form. Spooky when you really think about it. The black sheep of the shonen world, Ichigo Kurosaki, is the substitute soul reaper that was part of the big three in shonen back in the day. Before its decline in the mid-2010s, Bleach was one of the most popular manga series in weekly shonen. But hey, good news! It's coming back! In Ichigo's world, he had to face off against powerful beings from the spirit world with a cool-looking sword. In Bleach, a Soul Reaper's power level is not measured like in Dragon Ball, but Ichigo blasted away the competition and soared above even the 13 court guard captains. Throughout his journey, Ichigo underwent a couple of key transformations that made him so powerful. First, his initial power was lent to him by Rukia. When she left, Ichigo had to awaken his own spiritual powers, and that ended up awakening something within him, his hollow powers. Later on in the series, after it's revealed that his dad was a Soul Reaper too, it's revealed his mother was a Quincy, another powerful race of spirit beings. So by the end of the series, Ichigo was part Soul Reaper, part Quincy, and part Hollow. All the series' main powerful forces all combined into one being. Talk about a jack of all trades. You knew this would be on the list. Anime's original hyperactive knucklehead ninja, Naruto Uzumaki. People either loved or hated this little idiot when you were growing up, or you have discovered this show later on when it ended. Despite his annoying tendencies, Naruto is one ninja you don't want to mess with. Not only does he have higher than average endurance, but at a young age he learned to master a Junin level technique, the Shadow Clone Jitsu. His signature move, Naruto could make clones of himself that unlike regular clones were solid clones that could hit back. Of course, that's like early Naruto, we're forgetting his ace in the hole, the reason Naruto is such a beast. It's because he literally has a beast within him. You know about the nine-tailed fox spirit locked within Naruto, but that fox has so much power within it. That spirit locked within Naruto opened up a Pandora's box full of powers that helped make him Hokage when Naruto's journey ended. From bratty village punk to village Hokage, Naruto proved himself through his strength and convictions that were unmatched in his time. You were expecting Jono, but it was I, Kujo! Eh, botched memes aside, out of all the JoJo's so far, why are we talking about Jotaro Kujo? He makes his appearance in Part 3, one of the longer parts in the JoJo series. Not only is Jotaro a strong fighter himself, but he also possesses one of the most powerful stands in the series. 
Star Platinum. As a power type stand, Star Platinum has a lot of power, speed, and endurance and can dish out a lot of punches. And I mean a whole lot of punches. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of punches a second. Star Platinum has more power in his one finger than most stands have in their whole body. No, seriously, with Starfinger, he can extend his index finger up to two meters long with the same force and speed as a punch to puncture someone's chest or head. What's even crazier is the fact that Star Platinum straight up has the same ability as the world Dio stand. Star Platinum can stop time for brief moments around him and Jotaro. In his prime, Jotaro could stop time for five seconds. It may not seem like a lot, but for a stand with blazing speed like Star Platinum, five seconds was four too many. So who could top JoJo? Well, technically the next five people on this list, but to a better answer, the question Koro-sensei from Assassination Classroom can take him on. Well, assuming he wants to. Koro-sensei is an educator, not a fighter. Of course, given the proper context, Koro-sensei is a legit monster. He destroyed 70% of the moon for God's sake. Okay, well, he took credit for doing that and didn't actually do it, but he so totally could. Koro-sensei has a host of frightening powers at his disposal that make him a nightmare to fight, but the most prevalent power he has is going at Mach 20 speeds. To put that into perspective, Mach 20 is going 15,345.40 miles per hour. Even with a 5 second time stop, Koro could be halfway across the continent. To help visualize how fast that is, Koro-sensei can go from LA to New York City in 10 minutes. Of course, he's not just insanely fast, but he has a regenerative healing factor. His body is made of antimatter, for God's sake. Nothing but a special anti-sensei material can harm him. That alone would put him at number one if the material to kill him was not so readily available. Here's how the story goes. We find out about a treasure in the Grand Line. There's no doubt the pirate whose eye is on it. He'll sing, I'll be king of the pirates. I'm gonna be king. Ahem. <clears throat> Let's talk about Luffy. You look at this rubber pirate boy and you think, nah, he can't be a strong boy. Well, that's where you were wrong, but he's one of the strongest boys there ever was. In One Piece, there are these special fruits called devil fruits that give a person or animal special powers. Some fruits can turn you into pure light or freaking lava. However, Luffy is a rubber man. Still, he has proven to be one of the most powerful pirates and is still getting stronger. What makes Luffy such a formidable fighter is his high pain tolerance and super strength as well as the versatility of his devil fruit powers. I mean, the old saying about rubber and glue is true. In addition to his various gum gum techniques, Luffy also has hockey. Hockey is a kind of special force that was introduced that gives people a host of powers such as stronger skin and items to foresight and extra senses. I know what you might be thinking. All Might? Why not Deku? He is the main protagonist, right? Yes, and it is also true that during his fight with All for One, All Might lost his powers completely. However, if we're measuring raw power, in his prime, All Might was the strongest hero in the My Hero Academia universe. He was the number one hero and passed his quirk on to young Midoriya. What All Might has is more than just mere power, though. It's the collected strength and power from everyone who's wielded the power before him. The quirk, one for all. Yep, this quirk gives All Might his power. A lot of raw power, in fact. However, All Might is also the symbol of peace in the hero world, and that comes with a lot of responsibility. But also a lot of what is called soft power. Soft power is often used for nations. However, for All Might, he has an influence on those around him. His presence inspires the next generation and lets those who see him know that he is ever-present. So that's why All Might is number three. He has one of the biggest punches, but it's his legacy that has the biggest impact on the world. Yeah, people often forget Death Note was part of Shonen Jump. So with that being said, why is he so high on this list? Well, it's not really because Light himself has anything aside from his high IQ. Light Yagami was made famous for his expert use of the Death Note. His reign as the terrible Kira has ripple effects on his world that were still felt years later. The Death Note is an insidious book. It comes with some handy yet grim rules. The human whose name is written on this note shall die. This note will not take effect unless the writer has the person's face in their mind when writing his or her name. Therefore, people sharing the same name will not be affected. If the cause of death is written within the next 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. If the cause of death is not specified, the person will simply die of a heart attack. After writing the cause of death, details of the death should be written in the next 6 minutes and 40 seconds. So if Light knows who he is fighting, he can control their actions up until the point of death and have that death happen in any reasonable way he wants. 
or he could just drop his opponents down with a heart attack, provided they only have one heart. Yeah, you knew where this was heading. To some, it might be a little anticlimactic, and to others, it might be downright predictable. But I ask you, did you really think anybody in Shonen Jump's history was going to compare to Goku? One of the most recognizable anime figures in the medium and arguably Shonen Jump's most popular franchise. Put aside Goku's fame, the legacy of battles and fights Goku's been in has more than earned him the top spot. The classic schoolyard debates about who would win in a fight, Goku or Superman. I feel like I don't even need to go into his actual powers, but just a quick recap. Cap, Master Martial Artist, plus Super Saiyan. All you really need to say are those two words and that's enough, but wait, there's more. There's Super Saiyan 2, Super Saiyan 3, 4, Vegito, and the more powerful Gogeta. Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, Ultra Instinct, baby! I could have just started with Ultra Instinct Goku, honestly, and that would have been enough. Point is, Goku sits upon the top of the hill. Will somebody come to claim that throne? Someday, but not today. And those are the 10 strongest Shonen Jump heroes. Did we miss somebody on the list? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon for notifications on CBR content.